The question I want to pose today is a relatively simple one. And it's, do you want to really genuinely make change or are you still trying to make everyone happy? And the reason why I have to pose this question is because at the moment there's a new and very interesting wave of articles that are coming out, especially in the general diversity and inclusion space. And it's going back to saying, A, I posted an article on this, A, you know, we don't, we only want the best people and we're not looking at gender at all. You know, the best people get the job. And B, the other line of thought that's coming out a lot is, you know, after Me Too and Black Lives Matter, we shouldn't ignore the opinions of, you know, the majority within the workplace. And the point for me is really this. With this kind of language, we're doing away, we're still pitting one against the other. The fact of the matter is, is that the way the workforce has been created, going back to the concept of the issues being systemic, it has been created to be exclusive, i.e. excluding women, excluding people of colour, excluding women of colour. So when we're talking about the, the vote of the majority, in this case, in the article I'm referencing, he was saying, you know, uh, white men being more important, we need to listen to what they also need. I'm never discounting an opinion, but what I will say is we have to understand that the benchmarks, the points of reference, the guides, the goals are made with white men in mind. That's why they're at the top of the power triangle and everybody else is squeezing themselves into a box to be similar, be in the olden days. When I say the olden days, I don't even know what time frame I'm thinking about here, but let's say, you know, um, the 70s potentially, you know, or actually I think it was the 80s because I think I can remember the adverts, you know, with power, like shoulder pads and women trying to take on a more masculine type or whether it's kind of going through to even now, whereas a black woman, you know, you try to round off your edges to to pass, to fit in, to be, to make your double estrangement, um, you know, less noticeable. And this is what we have to be careful of, but this is also companies, this is what you have to keep in mind because the rhetoric about, you know, bearing in mind the majority and all that kind of stuff, that's created to get business by these companies but it's also created to keep you in your comfort zone and this is what we have to move past and this is what we have to move away from change is never comfortable it never is you know whether it's you know i always re like refer it to really normal things whether it's losing weight whether it's gaining weight whether it's you know whatever you're trying to do it's not comfortable it's not easy and anybody that's offering you a what feels to you like a comfortable way out, they are saving you, they're saving you potentially short-term pain, short-term pain, I hasten to add, because they're still not looking at the deep-rooted issues, namely sexism, racism, that has got us to this point today. We can't still be approaching the topic with kid gloves anymore, because we've, it, it's been done and it hasn't worked. So now the question for every company is, are you still trying to be comfortable and keep the majority happy? Or are you trying to really transform your culture and, under, and do you understand what that entails? That it entails not just uncomfortable conversations, but it entails looking at yourself as a leader. It involves looking at your staff and really assessing where everybody is and how much or how possible is it that they accompany you on this journey? Because it's been a year since George Floyd has been murdered. It's been, what, what year is it now, 2021? So it's been you know, over a year for the pandemic. And in this time, racial injustice, gender inequalities have just purely been exacerbated. So as we now tether between this world of, you know, new normal, this hybrid world that we're living in, there's going to be the need for 
deeper conversations. In fact, you know, I'll be making a video on this separately, but there's going to be the need to have deeper conversations that go far beyond the persona or the bubble that we create around the working world. Because this line of demarcation is still causing issues. But we have to push past all of those and keep trying, not even keep trying, actively pushing for change. Because more is going to come, this wave of we don't need to, focusing on women is, you know, the, the, the voices of these people are it's only going to get louder. But don't let it sway you in your desire to create a gender balanced and racially equitable company. Because of what it will cost you in the long term, it's easy to think, you know, right now, this is a great idea. But what it will cost you in the long term will severely outweigh any benefits it seems you seem to acquire in the short term. So the bottom line is, don't pick comfort, pick change.